considered one of the most important and essential molecules for life. What makes water such a simple molecule only made from hydrogen and oxygen? What makes it so special and so important? Well, this really does have to do with the properties that are present in the water molecule that makes it so diverse and so important. Today, we're going to be talking about these properties. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to be familiar with these learning targets. So make sure to pause the video, write these learning targets down, or make note of them. Now, when we're discussing the properties of a molecule or when we are describing a molecule or a compound, there are two ways we can um, describe them, or there are two types of molecules and compounds. A molecule or compound can either be a polar or nonpolar. The term polar means that this molecule or this compound is um, unequally charged. In other words, it's in the same molecule, we have two different charges present at opposite ends. Um, if a molecule is nonpolar, it is equally charged, meaning that it has the same charge everywhere on the same molecule. So it could either be entirely negatively charged or it could be entirely positively charged. Water is actually a polar molecule. And if you take a look at a molecule of water, you will notice that it is made up of a oxygen and two hydrogens. The oxygen side is negatively charged or slightly negative, and the hydrogen sides are slightly positive. The reason why we have this unequal distribution of charges is because um, water is essentially a greedy uh, atom. It loves to bring the electrons uh, much closer to it than hydrogen. And if you remember, whenever we are combining two or more atoms to one another, there has to be some form of a chemical bond that joins them. So we have a chemical bond that is joining oxygen to hydrogen. But this chemical bond that forms, um, and, it, it, and it involves the, um, the sharing of electrons, this sharing is actually unequal. Okay, again, this is because oxygen is slightly greedy and it will pull the electrons, just like you see in this um, cartoon, it's pulling the electrons a little bit closer to itself. And we all know that the electrons are negatively charged particles. So if they are closer to the oxygen, then they will kind of uh, give some of that negative force or negative energy they will give that they will give some of that to the oxygen side the hydrogen side is further away from these shared electrons so therefore this side is slightly positive it remains slightly positive since it does not have these negative electrons close to it so therefore just like you see here the the oxygen side becomes slightly negative and the hydrogen side becomes slightly positive now, the fact that water is polar is super important. It is super significant for uh, maintaining homeostasis in your body. And homeostasis is a word that means perfect balance. Okay, so when you are healthy, when all the processes in your body are, are balanced and working as they should, we say that the body or the organism is in homeostasis. Balance everything is working like it should be, your body temperature is in a certain range, your blood pressure is in a certain range, the amount of sugars in your blood are in a certain range, etc. So when that happens, when we are in homeostasis, we are healthy, that is what we want to aim for. Polarity is actually one of the properties of water that allows it to help us maintain homeostasis because it allows pretty much everything to dissolve in it, okay? Why do you need things to dissolve, to dissolve in water? Well, think about it. The majority of your blood is made up of water. The majority of your blood is made up of water. So you want important nutrients, vitamins, sugars, salts, etc. All of these things that your cells need to stay healthy and alive, they need to dissolve so that the cells can use them. And therefore, it is important that water being polar allows all of these things to dissolve in it so that they can be carried to other parts of the body and they can be used by the cell to keep them alive. So as a general rule, like always dissolves like. What do we mean by this? We mean that 
if a molecule is polar, it will only dissolve other polar molecules or solutes, okay? Uh, and if something is nonpolar, it will only dissolve nonpolar substances within it. Polar and nonpolar substances will always remain separate. A perfect example of this is if you've ever tried combining water and oil. You can actually try this at home. In a cup, add water and then add some oil to the water. What you will notice is they will never mix. So if you try to mix oil and water, it will look something like this. You'll notice that the oil will float and the water, so they will have two separate layers. Why does this happen? Well, oil is actually a non-polar substance, while water we know is polar. And since oppositely, like a polar and a non-polar uh, molecule do not mix, we will have this separation and these layers forming, okay? So oil is non-polar and water is polar and therefore they will not mix. Now, when we are describing a solution, um, there are certain words that you need to be familiar with. A solution is anything that is uh, dissolved in water. So, so whenever anything dissolves in water, that, that becomes known as a solution. Um, then the main part of the solution or the biggest percentage is going to be the solvent. And that's usually going to be water. Water is always, or for the most part, going to be your solvent. So when you see the word solvent, you know that we are talking about water. The solute is things that dissolve in water, such as salts, sugars, um, anything that will dissolve in water is known as a solute, okay? In order for a solution, a homogeneous, uh, basically a solution that you can't tell the part of, in order for a solution to form, both the solvent and the solute must be like, or in other words, they must both be either polar or nonpolar. The example that you see here with the oil and water, this is not a solution or this is not a homogeneous solution, meaning that you can actually tell the layers, you can tell them apart, you can tell where the water is, you can tell where the, where the oil is, they did not mix. And for the, and then this is because they are different. One, one is nonpolar and one is polar. So when we are form, forming a solution, both the solvent and the solute have to be the same, either both nonpolar or both polar. Now, when we're talking about the, the, the molecule or the water molecule, <clears throat> we know that whenever a molecule or a compound forms, we, hydrogen and the bonds must be involved. So there are actually uh, different kinds of bonds that are found in a water molecule. So there's two bonds that you need to be familiar with, a covalent bond and a hydrogen bond. So um, the, the water itself, water molecules, they will never be found on their own. Water molecules have the ability to stick to one another. They love to be near one another. And if you ever tried to put two water droplets, one next to, the, one next to another, you will notice that they kind of attract just like magnets and they form these two droplets. So the reason why this happens is because water molecules contain hydrogen bonds that basically um, uh, combine or, or bo bind one water molecule to another water molecule. So the hydrogen bonds are found outside of the water molecules and they combine two different water molecules to one another. We also have a covalent bond that forms within inside the water molecule. And this covalent bond forms between hydrogen and oxygen. And if you remember from the previous slide, I mentioned that um, oxygen and hydrogen are sharing electrons. And that is why we have a covalent bond forming between the oxygen and the hydrogen of the same water molecule. So we have a covalent bond here being uh, happening between the hydrogen and the oxygen and the oxygen being slightly greedy, and that's why it is slightly negative. Um, and on the other hand, we also have a hydrogen bond between two water molecules. So I want you to pay attention to these keywords. Within the water molecule, we have a covalent bond. Between two water molecules, we have a hydrogen bond. Now, the hydrogen bond will always form between a positively, or between a positive side and a negative side, okay? So it's like almost, if you ever had a magnet, right? and you try to um, combine the same side together, they will always repel, okay? In order for a magnet to stick, stick to another magnet, you have to combine the opposite sides. 
The same thing is happening here with the hydrogen bond. The hydrogen bond will only form between a positive hydrogen and a negative oxygen of two different water molecules. This is our first water molecule. This is our second water molecule. And the hydrogen bond is forming between these two sides, a positive side and an oppositely charged negative side. Now, hydrogen bonds are so important. They are so simple. They're actually one of the weakest bonds, but they are so important because they lead to all of the important properties of water that we are going to be discussing. So high specific heat, cohesion, adhesion, uh, universal solvent behavior, and the dissociation of water are all properties that are caused by the fact that water has hydrogen bonds. And I'm going to be discussing each one of these um, properties of water in more details in the next video. The last thing I want to talk about today is the pH scale. And we use a pH scale when we are describing a solution. Okay, so a solution could either be an acid, it could be a base, or it might be neutral. So when we are trying to figure out what kind of solution do we have in front of us, we will use a pH test. You can actually test the solution to figure out where it lands on the scale. And then in order to describe how acidic or how basic it is, we will be use, we use this pH scale. So as we go, the pH scale always begins with zero and ends with 14. And as we move, um, any, so seven being the middle, the middle point. Seven is neutral. So when something is neither acidic nor basic, it is considered neutral. And if something is neutral, um, the perfect example of a neutral uh, molecule is pure water. Pure water is neutral. It's not an acid. It's not a base. Anything below seven is going to be an acid. And as we move further and further away from that neutral point, the acid is going to become stronger. So acids that have lower numbers on the pH scale, such as 1 or you know 0 0.5 or something like that, they are going to be considered very strong, corrosive, dangerous acids. So hydrochloric acid, which can actually irritate, burn through your skin, it can cause acid burns, um, that is going to be all the way towards the end of the scale, 0 point or 1 point something. Um, and as we move, uh, as the number increases towards 7, and that's going to be a weak acid. So something like a banana or an apple or a lemon, tomato or vinegar, these are all substances that are weaker acids. And that's why we can consume them and it's fine. We don't die because of it. Um, and then on the other side, so anything above seven, okay, is going to be a base. So starting from 7.1 onwards, that is a base. And just like the, just like in the acids, as you move away from that neutral point, so anything with a, with a large number, such as 13 or 14 on the pH scale, is considered a strong base. So drain cleaner or ammonium, these are very strong bases. If, we, if they touch our skin, they will cause irritation. They will cause burns, okay? They will cause issues to happen. But something that is a weak base, such as soap or baking soda or even our blood, obviously that is um, less harmful. Um, so essentially, what's the point of a pH scale? We are just using it to describe a solution, if it is, whether it's an acid, base, or neutral. So like I said, anything that is below 7 is going to be considered an acid. And the reason why acids have a pH of below 7 is because when we try to dissolve an acid, something that is acid, in water, it releases these things known as hydrogen ions or it releases hydrogen. That's just how it reacts. So you end up with very high hydrogen concentrations. Um, and this registers on the pH scale as a pH less than 7. Okay, so in general, what you need to know is that acids, when they are dissolved in water, they release high amounts of hydrogen, high concentration of hydrogen, and their pH is less than 7. And on the other hand, bases remove hydrogen from a solution when you dissolve them in water. So they have low hydrogen concentration and their pH is more than 7. So just to kind of summarize, and then of course neutral solutions have a pH of 7. Just to summarize, when a substance dissolves in water, if that substance is an acid, it will release hydrogen ions and it, you will have a high hydrogen concentration. 
This means that the pH is less than seven and it is an acid, for, an exa for example, lemon juice. If you, uh, if you dissolve a substance in water and it is a base, it will remove, take away the hydrogen ions. So you will have low hydrogen concentration and the pH will be more than seven. An example of this is like soap, okay? And then in the middle, we have the neutral solutions, which their pH is seven and they, an example of that is pure water. So it's not going to either release nor remove. It doesn't do anything. It's already neutral. It already has a pH of seven. So that's it for this video. Um, in the next video, I am going to be talking about the properties of water in more details. So stay tuned for this.